If you're always looking for ways to cut corners, make a picture frame. To save some time, you can... Micro Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Step It Up, where I challenge myself to step outside of my comfort zone. And as it turned out, this is probably one of the most challenging projects I've ever attempted. I picked up this beautiful walnut board the other day. It's got a great grain pattern. It's got a couple of bad spots, but I'll cut those off as I rip these into two strips. There's only two different lengths of boards I need to cut. The quickest way to do that is using my miter saw. So this was something that was kind of interesting that I didn't foresee. By flipping those boards back and forth, switching between making a miter and a bevel, half of them are the right size and the other half are too long. I see, it's because of the thickness of the board that I didn't take into account. So if I cut it this way, those were the right size. But if I flip it this way with the lead edge against the stop block, you can see it overhangs. That's the part I need to cut off on four of these. It's this kind of thing that keeps woodworking interesting. For some reason in my mind, cutting these pieces all the exact same shape made perfect sense. And it even made perfect sense on my plans. But when I actually went to put this together in the real world, I realized my error. Clearly I need the reverse bevel on half of these because as I start to put this together, and if I was to put this one here, you can see that this bevel goes in and this bevel comes up. So if I was to go this way, then this would be completely off, requiring me to put an angle this way, which would just be one really, really wacky picture frame. Kids, someday you can grow up to be a YouTube woodworker. So to fix this, instead of recutting half of the miters, I'm gonna recut half of the bevels since that's a shorter distance. I'll lose less of the wood. This is also known as the stupid method of woodworking. Okay, now I think this should work out, at least in the, in the universe I actually live in. I need to cut some rabbits to hold the pictures and glass in place. I'm marking all the boards so I remember which side to cut those on. I'm gonna cut these using a stack of dado blades in my table saw. You could also use a router. Gluing this all together is going to be a challenge to say the least. I think what I'm gonna do is glue together the two halves first. I think I'll put some clamps right across the miters. All right, let's see how these turned out. Since I wasn't able to clamp these miters up, I'm not sure how strong they are, so I'm gonna reinforce those with some splines using my spline cutting jig. I cut all of the splines into little pieces that I can glue into those slots. Not only do the splines add strength to your projects, but remember, it makes them look extra fancy. At least I've had plenty of time to dry, I'll just trim off the excess.
a couple of these miters don't fit together perfectly, so I'm filling the gap with a combination of glue and the sawdust that I sanded from the frames. I don't normally use mechanical fasteners to assemble picture frames, but in this case, this is gonna be a real weak spot between these. So I'm gonna use these corner brackets with some glue and splines. But when I put the screws through the brackets, they'll also go into the miter. Well, that was pretty tricky. Obviously, I can't put splines on these inside corners, but I think those should hold it together strong enough. The one goes on the outside corner of the wall. I can still put splines in those. Well, I don't think these are perfectly square, but on the plus side, I don't think any of the corners in my house are perfectly square either. I'll cut this piece of plexiglass down to size using my table saw. This is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna to try to bend this acrylic using my heat gun. Not sure if I got it a sharp enough angle. It's hot. So I cut this longer because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get the bend right in the middle and I'm glad I did that because I'm going to have to shave a little bit off of this side and that side to get it centered. Putting some tape on here to prevent it from scratching. Yeah, amazingly, I think that's going to work. And I'll finish these off with a few coats of spray lacquer. Now I can assemble all the pieces. I've got one of these point drivers to help me hold everything in place. These picture frames wrap around the corner of a wall or set inside a corner of a wall. I made these out of walnut with maple splines. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this project. This was a challenging one, definitely. There was a big part of me at the beginning of this that kind of thought this was just going to be one massive fail, but it's fun to step outside of your comfort bubble once in a while and just explore some new things. If you enjoyed this project and would like to see more, please click subscribe so you won't miss a video. And be sure to check out all of the other videos in my Step It Up series. Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you next time.